This is a production of the Triple Star Amusement Corporation. The following was recorded sometime earlier. Now with the fast air and the pyros and the rolling on the cloud. This is how you start a CHW show. Am I right, sir? Welcome everybody to another exciting episode of Combat Wrestling. It's your boy Mark and Juan, bringing you the excitement, the thrill, and the action back action, all play by play, who lies? I'll always begin with the city. Like, I got a bit of news to let you know. Um, Tonight will be the very last round of the Tournament of Dane. But instead of going into the separate practice that we'll be going, we're going to have one full fatal four-way match for all four finalists trying to be the one to match Maria Zimmerman for the Combat Wrestling Dane Championship at the upcoming Egg Mega event. We also have a pick your poison style kind of match where the contestants for the Combat Wrestling Multinational Championship has chosen an opponent for each other for tonight in preparation for that match at the Mega event. We also have uh, some words from our esteemed social media champion, Teddy Rockin, concerning his uh, predicament. So speaking of segments, right now we got the uh, Thunderbolt, who requested some interview time to address the uh, actions that they've committed on at the very end of last episode. So, without further ado, let's begin our celebration of CHW. Let's begin our celebration of Action Pack Action, now! And there they are, folks. The two male members of the organization known as the Thunderbolts, Bullseye and Agent Venom, coming down the aisle. They requested some uh, interview time because they say that they definitely want to explain their actions, the heinous actions that they perpetrated on the ending of episode 4 of Combat Wrestling. Right after a grueling match from the members of the Nintendo Order against each other to determine their representatives against the FFO, the current reigning defending Combat Wrestling Pack for Let's listen to what these two have to say and let's see if this makes for a good alibi. But something in my gut tells me that might be down. Let's just give it a benefit of the doubt. The following video has been sponsored by the Nintendo Order. I think I might go out on a limb right now and play a double dash with you and say that we might be a little hot. I don't know their actions, but I can be understandable.
<laughs> That's good to know. Ooh, the Mario Brothers making a beeline towards the race. And everybody in the CW world knows that based off Mario are deadly Mario. Oh man, look at this. Each team staring a hole right through the other. Fuck off. Oh man, I'll be more than that. Oh, here comes the champ. No doubt the all certified and certified, if you know what we mean here. Like only they know how to do it. So the Colonel didn't sink the Thunderbolts. Nice to know. That's awesome news, but wait, what does this mean for the... What? Are you serious? A four-way tag match for the tag for championship? I only want one for that. Combat Wrestling Dot Court Championship is heating up! Let's take it a kick on the first of the two! It's your point of match is coming up right after this baby gets up and we're right back!
And we're back, folks. And what better way to start tonight's festivities than with the, with the most decorated clown in all of CHW Entertainment, the veteran, the man, the man, the legend. The clown that don't miss around when it comes to turning rounds upside down. And you kids know I'm right. <laughs> veteran of many years, of many leagues. This is still a wonder that he's still not in the ultimate title picture, but right now he has his set side on the multinational championship. And tonight he's going to try to demonstrate why he's worthy of it. With you my estimation of the full point of this is Ronald McDonald. He's not the nation of the wall. But hey, if Ronald does what Ronald won, that's the first Sabina. Veteran, I guess. But tonight's uh, match will not be any easy. Because as you've seen in the in the card, the poison pick for him is none other than the Phoenix the Fatal Emperor of the Outworld. Shao Ka. Which makes me wonder how much of an extra manipulator can the Joker be to convince this beast to do to do him this kind of thing to tenderize his younger brother before their match. I could honestly say I'm part of the fun that uh, the Joker gave Ronald some really undiluted 100% scorpion venom to drink in this match. Because anybody that knows how uh, Shao Kahn rolls knows that he is one of the stiffest, most dangerous individuals in that place. Will Ronald be able to succeed against him? Or will he fall next to the Emperor of the Outworld? A mega event, Maven caliber match to start the show, and we begin with it right now. As you can see through your monitor screens, uh, Ronald McDonald has starts this up with controlling our uh, Shotgun's head, and we go with a Russian leg sweep. And to quote uh, Timmy Dangerously from FPH, <laughs> even the clown that don't miss around, that's what it is. Ooh, nice uh, Dragon Screw leg whip by uh, Shotgun at the counter right there. Now Shotgun picking up Ronald, and ooh, Ronald kind of with that nice big float line right there. Now Ronald. Kicking up on Shao Kahn, and now he's just taunting punches to the back of and the temples of Shao Kahn. Good thing he had the helmet on her, up would have been some dangerous stuff, huh? Now, oh, nice old uh, technical prowess there. But then again, it is to be expected from Ronald, right? Now, Ronald going in there. Oh, no. Oh, no, not this move. Please, not this move. Oh, 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 Stiff close line right there after that forearm. Now uh, uh, Shao Kahn trying to control the situation. Speaking of Ronald, and he's gonna go for, ooh, I thought he was gonna go for a trapezio club, but Ronald read that thing, man. And he got it with that new uppercut right there. Now Ronald picking up Shao Kahn. Oh, he was gonna go for a club, uh, for a club body, but ooh, back break of his um, courtesy of Shao Kahn. Now Shao Kahn, oh, nasty stiff close line. To the corner, alley -oop! Bringing Ronald down with with, a, with his weight, own weight against him. Now Shao Kahn, clenching, but ooh, this time, Ronald connects with that uh, flying forearm right there. Now here we go with a, ooh, nice, uh, meanly clutch right there by Ronald, but ooh, Shao Kahn gets that way from there real quick. Now, oh, we're going for a signature already. We go with the burger. Here we go, the fry, and here we go, the soda. Good time, great taste combo. First, we have a lot right there. And here we go for the first bit of the night. One. Only to the count of one. It's a little too early. But hey, some people might not get paid by the hour, and Ronald might be one of them. <laughs> now, Ronald picking up on Shao Kahn and tosses him to the outside, to the thinly padded floor. And Ronald, um, per and hot pursuit. Picking up Shao Kahn, and oh boy, and there might be evil intentions in the mind of Ronald. Picking up and controlling that head, 
trying to drag him around into the into the table. Ooh, Shao Kahn decided, nope, not this time. But Ronald continued with that pressure going in. And oh, nice evasion by uh, Shao Kahn there. Now it's Shao Kahn controlling uh, Ronald's head, grabbing a, a handful of that afro, I guess. And oh, tosses him through the inside of the ring. And Ronald catches him. But oh, nice countering to that sandbag by uh, Shao Kahn, utilizing his own um, weight as a weapon right there. Now Shao Kahn, blowy blow, picks him up. And, oh, are we going to see it? No, we got the hammer of that one instead. Take the German over here, one. Only to the count of one. That might not be sufficient, Shao Kahn, so you might want to keep on going on that. Now Shao Kahn picking up Ronald. Now he tosses Ronald to the outside far. And he goes into hot pursuit. Now Shao Kahn picking up Ronald. And he would go with a... Oh, I thought he was going to go for a spine muscle and a silly kind of floor. Good thing Ronald doesn't even intend to block that with a forearm of his own. Now Ronald picking up Shao Kahn. Tosses him to the corner. And oh, nice evasion there by uh, Shao Kahn. Who proceeds to toss uh, Ronald to the outside yet again. Oh, we'll punch to the face. Of, oh, no. Oh, boy. This is going to suck and hurt in more ways than you want to know. Oh, so far a flag. From the rope to the inside. And now he's going to try to fit again. Referee, um, you said a Hapati position. One, two. Oh, two lift him and two to the count of two. Now, Shao Kahn trying to figure out how to put the clown out. And, oh boy, are we going to see it? Are we going to? No, are we? I guess we are. Yes, we are. The fatality. The fatality going to trade that little one, two, and oh, I thought it was going to be over. Not that many people can get away from the fatality, let me tell you. And Ronald has been one of them. And oh, nice um, elbow shot right there to take the big man down. Oh, punch to the face. Oh, oh boy. The question is going to be asked. The same natural maneuver is going to be performed. And the question is does. Go on, Frank, with that. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think, oh, uh, Chuck on Oh, here we go with a pin. One, two. No, ladies and gentlemen. Two to the two. Now, Ronald's the one who's about to hit his. Are we going to see it? I think we might. Don't slam! Don't slam! Oh, God. Here we go. Referee, uh, you said a fighting position. One, two, and no, ladies and gentlemen. That superior strength of uh, Shao Kahn <laughs> prevailed through right there on that kick out, but it may not be enough. Now Ronald is going to signal for the second one of the night. Here we go with another back slam. And this time with Pitt and referee, you said a fighting a little long, but he was the one. Two, and this time, Ronald McDonald wins. Pit stick, your poison man. Fuck all of her. Tonight, I'm here to give all props to the world to Shao Kahn. He demonstrated that he is maybe as dangerous, maybe in the same thing as DXC, General Zod, and why not say it also by showing that superior strength and brutal of demeanor. But in the end, the technique to kill him for of Ronald McDonald has to be him through. With double minutes of to this match against the big brother Joker as the mega event. But don't discount uh, Shao Kahn. This demonstrated that he could be a major player here at the uh, combat wrestling. Perhaps one day, the day will come where he will pull combat wrestling with the same iron fist of madness and malice that he does to Outworld, but tonight, however, the victory goes for Ronald, and to the victor go to spoil them, all right? And yet, I feel the question must be asked, will this be the same outcome at the Mega Event? Will Ronald be able to capture the Combat Wrestling Multinational Championship, or will the Joker retain? I guess the only way to find out the answer to that question will be to wait for the Mega Man And those two clowns, the two most undecorated clowns in this business, would face each other for Combat Wrestling's Multinational Championship.
and also for uh, Dragon Rice to see who is the better of the two. But until then, let's let Ronald bask in the victory that he are fought for. And uh, wait a minute. Oh, ho, 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 of course. Big Brother shows uh, appear to remind Ronald of who holds in the championship. The mind games begin. The mind games. The constant of uh, heading in the head. Why so serious? Always so serious when dealing with the Joker. The fact that Ronald himself knows way too well. Listen, gentlemen, we'll be right back after this. Don't go in there, please. everybody to come and wrestling oh no it's the time isn't it oh no it's him the dark one is here ah! let's go to that time time for the battle of oblivion to be open in order and swallow a new victim well time to hear his name of it yet again As we've been made aware since last episode, that's the name he's given to his own invitational, where he only invites the strongest of the strong here in Comet Wrestling to try to tumble him down, or become next sacrifice in the fire. And uh, I don't see anybody making also stop his path of oblivion anytime soon. I could be wrong, but uh, See how I know it is, I don't see it happening. Listen. Wait a minute, Spartacus? 
Well, no disrespect to the Phantom, but I don't think he fits in the description that also has been mentioning. I mean, he's very brave for him and up here, but uh, I don't know about this. And I guess Oslot is uh, accepting this challenge. He's calling uh, Sparksman into the ring. And look at him. He's going into a beeline into there. And I guess this match is official. As soon as the bell gets rung. And the Pact of Oblivion pre-opens his door. Sparksman going full aggressive with an early going. Oh, nice prop pick there. He's going to try to outmaneuver and out area. Oh, that's going to be a huge mountain to take down. I'm telling you. Now a boxer, nice uh, arm takedown and a kick, and ooh, now off the counter with that right, right on screw leg with right there. And now, Sparkster trying to do one of his own. Give credit to the possum. He's incredibly brave to give in there with that piece of a creature there. But, uh, I mean, sometimes, honor before reason, but uh, I don't know if that's a good idea for Sparkster. Like, uh, see? See what I'm saying? Look at that stiff clothesline right there. Now Sparkster going behind it. Ooh, dropping him with a reverse DDT there. And now Onslaught out. Shift, uh, shifting the momentum to his like, Oh! Fisherman with release. And he just talked to him like a rag doll. For all intents and purposes. Oh, man. Oh, man. This is going to hurt. Oh! Powerball with a horror ball right there. From the being known as Onslaught. Oh no, oh no, ooh, okay, he hit in the mix section. At least he has enough of honor to do that. Oh, that's impressive right there. He's hitting a back body drop to a seven footer, um, seven plus, 400 plus pounder like that. Oh boy, ooh, nice arm drag. Still trying to outmaneuver the onslaught, which is kind of a good uh, strategy if you ask me. Now, oh, 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 the double stop to the chest. Under other circumstances, that would hurt a lot, but this is Onslaught. I don't, I don't even think it's... Oh! Uda Nagi right there. Oh, boy. Oh, I saw him pacing. When he paces, be scared. When Onslaught paces, you know what's going to happen. Oh, here we go. Sunset flip power bomb right there by uh, Foster. How he managed it? I don't know. It's more of a inertia versus momentum kind of thing. You might have to, uh, oh, oh, he was going to go for a uh, rocket, uh, for the fighter's birth, but that got Connor with the knee. Ooh, nice there with the uh, face buster and follows it over the wheelbarrow of uh, the Foster does. Now he's going to go for the pin. One, and look at that, look at that, he just tossed him across the ring like it was nothing, despite being in pain. Onslaught did, and oh, look at him, shoving him, like it's a, like it's a freaking rag dog. Onslaught, oh boy, oh boy, you spin me around, around, Richard, around, around. Oh boy, I'm making fun and I'm making jets, but this isn't funny at all, folks. This is a master of a battle, just taking out on the smallest creature. One, two, and oh, somehow, some way, Sparkster gets off with a two, to the two. And the last thing you want to do is uh, anger uh, all the time. But Boxer, he's doing this for his honor. He's doing this for, for revenge, I guess. For vengeance, but I don't think that might do enough. I really don't. Now, also continuing this punishment of his. Picking up all... Uh, look at him. Just, just shoved his head up and just... And now just toss him the... And we got the first bump, left bump of the night. And an alley up to follow us through. And now Onslaught picking up uh, Parkster. Now kicks him up. Oh boy. Here we go with his signature. Great destruction. And we're going to be a pin for one, two, no. Ladies and gentlemen, Parkster somehow, some way, quite through the page and gets Onslaught up himself. And now Onslaught 
This is exactly what I would say. Oslo gets dangerous now that he's all in full cylinders. And look at him. Look at him. He's just mauling at poor uh, Sparkster. Under other circumstances, they will make me sick. But in a way, Sparkster brought this on himself, you know. Trying to go with other uh, before reason. Never a good idea. Or maybe it might be. And Oslo doing... Eh, eh, Wait, also doing acrobatics? Whoa, never thought I'd see that. Oh, no. Oh, no. This might be over before it began. Oh, the mighty hand! The mighty hand just spent him in half a year ago. One, two, and this was over before it began. Also, just had this one in the back of the gang globe. Oh, God. Sparkster, despite being a puzzle, has shown the heart of a lion. Trying to tackle this monster monster movie. Challenge here. Trying to uh, avenge himself for what happened a couple of episodes ago, but this is also what we're talking about. You have to do a lot more than than bring honor and, and, and fury to try to take this thing down. And thus, another victim gets uh, sent to the fire in the path of absolute oblivion. Ladies and gentlemen, who will be able to stop this magnificent, malevolent being? Known as Oslo. The dream might be dead if the path continues on the way it's straight. Ladies and gentlemen, here's your winner. Oslo. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm told we have a scheduled interview right now with the members of Sport Trois. We're going right there, right after Oslo is finished here. Because this is far from over. the personification of devastation whose name is on war. cameras back there, you might find out what is the cause of all the commotion.
they just burst into President Hita's office. I don't really think he's gonna like that at all. Well, I guess they got what they wanted at the cost of angry President Eden. And that will be on the main event on the pre-show. This one with the other match of the pick your poison coming out right after this one. Don't go anywhere.
Once again, folks, thank you so much for joining us here at Combat Rest. And there you see the current reigning, defending Combat Wrestling Multinational Champion, The Joker. participating in the second half of the Picture Poison Challenge. Ronald McDonald has already done his, and now it's uh, Joker's turn to do the call. Now here's a riddle inside an enigma inside a question. This guy has everything right now. A gorgeous wife, the, the second most prized possession in combat wrestling, i.e. the multinational championship. What, what goes through the mind of a man like this? Having it all and yet jeopardizing himself. Just to prove that he's the better of the two between him and Rob. Well, the Joker is the Joker. And as chaotic as his methods are, they're effective. Now let's find out who this poison happens to be. Great choice by Ronald! If it isn't none other than Elmo's perfect son, the one and only the best talker in this business in combat wrestling right now. And also one of the most uh, prolific young um, stars in this, in this business. I can see combat wrestling buddy everywhere else he has, he has been. Let me tell you, this guy has faced away in his young age. And he's supposed to be one of the megastars, one of the legends in this in the CAW business. And now he's going to demonstrate his stocking skills. Once that might drop into his hand, please don't lose it because it's just, it's just fun, it's just fun. I mean, there are promo machines out there, but I'm going to be honest, it's, it's just my personal opinion, but IMO, not quite like Mr. Waters. Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I want to remind you that tonight I come in weighing in at 226 pounds. I hail from Alamo, Ohio. However, all the talking in the world will not save you if you're not physically and more importantly mentally prepared with, to handle with someone like the joke. And now his chance will come. Pick your poison number two will begin as soon as the bell rings, which is right now. Joker, ever the veteran, taking control of the early on. Here we go with a ooh, nasty uh, vertical suplex right there. But the snap alive. Now he continues the pressure on Bobo. Picks him up and ooh! Attempted at a follow his land, but Bumble gets that out of there. Now Bumble with a, a nice uh, elbow shot to the head of uh, Joker. And again, this move that we affectionately call in combat wrestling. How the heck is this legal? <laughs> now Bumble is going for something. Oh, oh boy. Oh boy, oh no, no. Oh! He's just stomping on his arm. Good strategy. You know, a little on the vicious side, but um, good strategy nonetheless. But the Joker never discounted the Joker. If anyone could, if anyone knows a thing or two about being malicious, is that man right there, that clown right there, hitting the cat with that um, elbow there, taking Gumbo, and oh, nice invention there by Gumbo right there, with a punch to the gut, <laughs> Marky D style. <laughs> oh, headbutt from uh, Joker to um, Gumbo, and I don't think that was a good idea. Now Gumbo with a ooh snap vertical of his own right there. 
And oh, I'm alive. I'm alive. <laughs> oh, let's do the ton of one, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Joker picking up um, Dumble and oh, retaliation with a uh, kneeling fireman. Take that. And again, wrenching the head with that uh, move that we still question. It's legality. <laughs> now, Bumble picking up Joker. And Tusser says, oh, no, not even. He just goes for the boom down on top. Woo! And oh boy, are we going to see it this early in the night? I think we might. No, he evaded by the Joker expertly. Now he goes with a kick. Oh, hey, oh, White the Series out of nowhere. White the Series out of nowhere. One, two. And ladies and gentlemen, as soon as this began, as soon as it ended, Come come on record time! What God! Double there demonstrating once and for all why he deserves all the accolades we've given him. Going on the offense from the early going against Joker, but the veteran skills of the Joker just got the better of Double, and in the end, this pick of poison in the match ended as early as it began. Kudos to the Joker and having momentum for his match at the Mega Event. So, will this outcome repeat itself in the mega event securing the Joker at the combat wrestling training defending multinational championship? Or will the outcome be different? The only way to know is by being in the mega event when it's on. And don't worry, we will announce it real soon. Right now, congratulations to the Joker on his magnum victory, adding some very needed momentum for the match. And hold on, wait a second now. Okay. Oh, I don't like the look on Joker's face. You see? Oh, no. No, Joker. Joker, you won. It's over. You're done. No, oh, come on. I guess this is supposed to be a message. Oh, come on. No. Let me sick. Let me sick. Gonna, gonna send a, a direct message to his to his little brother. Oh, here comes Ramakano. Here comes Ramakano. He was not gonna allow the Joker to continue with this. This one here is proof that this is a personal as it gets between those two. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be right back after this. Please stay tuned for more. Welcome back everyone to Combat Wrestling and there he is, the Chicago Bear himself, the social media champ, Teddy Ruskin. No doubt here to address the situation concerning the contentious status for the combat wrestling social media championship. On the one hand, Tetsu wants to swear, excuse me, in that six man uh, battle royal, but on the other one, Little Caesar wants to swear on that case match soon after. So now, this needs to be addressed, and I think the champ is there to address. Let's listen.
Oh, we sure will, Mr. Ruskin. We sure will. The voting begins right now, but it's coming. Why? Remember, this is the championship that you guys control. Thank you, Mr. Ruskin, for your word. Who one things just keep getting better? Ten minute table match. Four consumer tip of the Audi champion. Right after this match is coming off. Heavy cap one and two. After this match. Please don't go anywhere. Uh, guys in the back, I think we forgot to play the commercial at it. Oh, wait, right? Oh, oh, look at everybody about to go back to Combat Wrestling. Ladies and gentlemen, the following tag team cuts is scheduled for one fall. On the way to the ring, the team of Moonstone and Sunburn representing the Thunderbolts. After the hate attacks of those two dames coming down the aisle against uh, Samus Aran ambushing her in the back in the back page while their, their male counterparts were ambushing Bucks and Max after that grueling victory in that episode, this match came about. Although I'm quite surprised that Sissy just wanted to take her end up by herself, but she did say there would be surprises, so knowing Sissy, <laughs> she could be crafty when she wants to be, so let's see what surprise she has in store. And speaking of La Belle Maupin, Madame et Monsieur, There she is, blowing kisses to the crowd and being ready for one hell of a grueling match against the two ladies of the Thunderbolt and Isaiah Thomas in such a... Wait a second, wait, is she, she's calling for someone, is she? The following video has been sponsored by the Nintendo Order. <laughs> This is a surprising match! Oh, things are gonna really heat up as she is! Samusara, no doubt, with thinking of her mind. Oh, this was a bombshell! But then we should have known better than to think that Samu was gonna let up the Thunderbolt slide after that. Horrible assault last episode. Oh no, not Sabu. That's not the type of woman she is. And uh, this, this, they plan, they plan and play this to perfection. You have got to give them credit for this. And now, let's just see if it's gonna give them the momentum required to get revenge on the Thunderbolt. Or will the Thunderbolt still prevail despite it all? There's only one way to find out by watching the match. Both teams are set. The combatants are ready. Referee, you're saying I'm ready to call the bell, and here we go! Seems to me that Samus wants fair dips in this match. And she starts us off with Moonstone. Who proceeds to go with a... Oh, I thought she was going to go for a power slam, but she gets her into a D. Now Samus picking up uh, Moonstone right there. And she smacks her across the face and touches her to the corner. And now Samus pick up, uh, turn her around, and oh, slamming her. Moonstone's head right into the canvas and a couple of pistol with Matthew. Now she goes for a ooh and very block monster right there. Now Samus trying to continue the pressure, but ooh, Moonstone kicks her 
getting her off herself and she's just continuing off her own. Camus attempted to regain momentum, touches her to her corner. And uh, she's gonna attack the VP? No, Musa will not allow that to happen with the arm drag. Now she punches Samus and now she's dragging her around the neck and puts her into the ropes and oh slingshot hot shot. That does not any that does not do anyone's throw the favor. Oh, and um, Samus makes her pay with that um, shoulder block. And now she tacks off to VP, who proceeds to get in there and, ooh, nasty face bump to there. And diving the knee onto Moonstone's face for good measure right there. Now VP picking up Moonstone, try to go for some kicks, and Moonstone counters with an elbow to the knee, and now she's going to drag, or attempt to drag, um, Fifi all to the way to her corner, and Fifi read that third round, and it's not going to let that happen. Now Fifi grabbing onto Moonstone and oh boy, are we gonna, oh, I thought you were gonna go for her already, but no, ooh, glory bomb. Chase of the late great Eddie Guerrero makes so for a red. Now Moonstone doesn't her to her corner and oh, I thought she was gonna pack to move uh, somewhere, but no, instead she's gonna put uh, Fifi in the field wall and one with Fifi with that kick to the gut. And now Wilson just dragging her around and just slamming her head continuously into that canvas. And Phoebe makes her pay with that arm right like there. Now she's the one grabbing her to the corner. I know. Uh oh. They count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten times. Moonstone forehead hit in the corner. <laughs> Now Musso doesn't visit to her corner again. Oh, nice invention there by Fifi with that um, elbow. But doesn't do much. Musso continues the pressure. Oh, that Moera kick. I haven't seen that one of those in quite a while. Quite impressive from La Belle Mouffet right there. But I'm afraid that would not count for much there. As demonstrated by Musso touching her to the outside edge. Oh, is she going to fly? Is Musso going to fly? Yes, she does. Do it, my guys. And I agree with everybody in the top of the reader. This. One, oh, oh. Now Moonstone continuing the pressure outside against Fifi. I can't rightly tell what's going on because it's all numbers standing in the way. And in the meantime, the count by you say at a five. Oh, that's the referee going in. And it's going very advanced. They better get in there before they get um counted out. And, oh, Fifi got to run it. Oh, body slam into the apron. And dropping the knees. Man, Fifi is really going unusually uh, aggressive tonight. I gotta, you gotta admit to that. Now, Fifi tossing Musso to the inside, knowing that the count is really advanced. And now Musso caught her and, oh, nasty Russian leg free. And uh, I have no, no call back for even she could do one of those. So, uh, my calling it to her, <laughs> it's immediately still stand. Oh, that's the clothesline right there by Moonstone. Well, that was something like crap. Now, oh, that's retaliation to a knee to the top by Fifi. Now, Fifi tossing uh, Moonstone to the corner and, oh boy, this is the part of the match that we call the water break. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta get, get some metro. Ah, so many great drinks out there, and yet water remains to so warm up them. Ooh, nasty drop kick there by Samus to get back into this action. And oh, first spin of the night, here we go. One, two, and oh, I thought that would have been the end of this match. And that was not it. That was not it. Now, Samus picking up the leg of Muson. Oh, dropping that nice uh, <laughs> lower body into it. Now, Samus picks it up, and oh, we might see it. Oh, no. Nice blockage by Moonstone. I think she saw the screw attack coming in. <laughs> she decided not to work. Oh, are we gonna see uh, Moonstone? We are! We are! Second analysis! It, it, it connected! It got Oh, but Samus did not tap to it. And yet, and now Moonstone's gonna try to put her that one, two, and oh! I think Moonstone thought that Samus would have been weakened enough with by the psychoanalysis, but that didn't happen. Samus is still going on all swimming. There's a little say as she tosses Moonstone into her corner, and now she tosses it to that side, and I think Samus is going to do some flying coast to coast. Oh, baseball slide! By the bunny hunter there. 
Oh, uh, <laughs> Fifi wants a piece of action, but uh, yeah, you don't want to get your team disqualified. I know you guys are hot, but uh, you don't want to go. You don't want to do all of this for nothing. Oh, Tumber finally into this match, and Samus, uh, Samus gives her bits her a from there, I guess. Now Samus picking up Sunbird. Oh, nice dimension there by Tumber with a kick to cut and a running Larry. And a drop kick there to follow up. And oh, another running Larry. And another of running drop kick. This one of the single leg variety. Now Samus trying to get the pressure off himself. And oh, a, a drop kick of her own there. Nice uh, back and forth we having in here. And, folks. and oh boy, oh. Oh, shoulder to shoulder slam, demonstrated that power. Even though she is the shorter of the two other ones, but she is the power out of them. Uh, ironically. And now, oh, so here we go with a pin. One, two, and oh, man. Gorgeous save by the gorgeous Muffet right there. Gorgeous save by Fifi La That's great teamwork right there. You gotta admire it. And these guys are not even an official team. That's what makes it more impressive, right? Now Sam will continue the pressure. Oh, nice for us. And she goes with an all oh, running knee to the face. Or was it a chest? I, I, I wasn't able to tell, but right there she goes with that oh, nearly clutch. And that hurts like hell. Is someone going to tap? Is someone going to tap to this? No, folks. Someone does not tap, but the damage might be done. And oh, nice snap suplex there by Samus to Sunbird. And oh boy, how are we going to see it? She's calling for it. Will we see it? No, we will not. Sunbird uh, catches it and retaliates with that dragon's blue leg there. Now, Sunbird figuring out what she's gonna do when, oh, she's gonna continue the punishment through her head. Oh boy. Ooh, Buster Crab. Buster Crab. As, as basic as it is, it's affected. Will someone tap? Will someone tap to this? No, she does not. But the damage might be done. She uh, admits to it and she tags to Fifi to take a break. And Fifi going to have a fire, but that moment to get uh, caught up. Or, yes, she did. And now she's going around. Ooh, snap, stupid of her own. Sunbird does. No, ooh, I'm alive. I'm alive! <laughs> Fifi, a live kick in front of him. Um, trying to catch up. Sunbird in the cradle right there. Oh, she's calling for it. Are we going to see it? Perhaps we are. Whoa, boy. Viva la Moo! Viva la Moo connects! And oh, here's the cover. One, two, and two, ladies and gentlemen. Two to the two. And it would have been a straight three if uh, Moonstone did not expertly distract referee just had a fat. Does making the match continue. Oh, nice drop kick there. And another drop kick by Viva la Moo. And here we go. Oh, we made an oh, plus body drop right there. Or it's a crossbody block. I'm sorry, guys. One of those two. <laughs> now, Fifi picks her up and oh, goes behind her. Oh, and Brother de Tere. And Brother de Tere weakening the head of Moon. Oh, Sunbird, I'm sorry. And puts her down. And now, is she going to go for it again? No, she goes to, to her corner. And is she going to attack to um, Samus? No, she does not. Instead, she decides to, that she's going to want to go close. Oh, yet again, and here we go with a baseball slide right there. Now, Fifi picking up uh, Sunbird, and now, oh, there's a little uh, back, uh, back and forth going on. And now, Fifi grabbing control of the head of most of them. Head to the head. And as I said earlier, flesh and still like that do not make. Oh, nice uh, um, drop kick, I think, from uh, Songbird, and now she's crushing the knee into the lower back of Fifi Lapiu. And throws the Fifi back into the ring right there. Now Songbird picking up Fifi, and Fifi retaliates with a nice arm drive right there. Fifi picking up Songbird, and now she tosses her to her corner yet again, taking her time, pacing herself, and now she tags to um, Samu said, oh, we, we go with something that's facing in the face, the diving axe handle to the arm. And Sunbird, a couple elbows to the face of Samu, that's what goes around, and does it her to her corner, where she goes facing, and oh boy, yet another water break for me. You feel excuse me, I'll be right back. Oh, 
clear, cold, refreshing water. You always be the favorite thing. <laughs> the best thing in the <laughs> Now Musto getting ready to pin. Here we go. One, two, and two to the two yet again, ladies and gentlemen. Oh boy, Musto is getting prepped to do it again. Are we gonna see it again? I think we are. Here we go. Oh, nice reaction by Samus to that big next to you. And now Samus thinking of doing one of her own. Is she gonna connect? Are we gonna see it? We are. Yes, the screw attack. The screw attack connected right there. She goes for the pin. One. Oh, Mitchell the count of one and oh, a little miscommunication going there by Fifi and Samus. Um, that might not bode well for these two after how far they've gone tonight. Now, Sam, uh, Samus gets clipped by Musto right there with a threat. Now, Musto tags into Songbird and oh, hot tag by Samus to Fifi. Who proceeds to go in there and oh, nice evasion there by Songbird. Now, Songbird tossing uh, Fifi to her corner and oh boy. Now Sombra's gonna try to lose some slide of her own. He's got evil intentions, you can tell. Here we go. Coast to coast D D T on that Finley added floor. Now, ooh, nice um, nice short uh, jab right there by Fifi. That's a good one. Now Fifi picking up on Somber and Somber retaliates with a ooh, rushing leg sweep. Proving once again that even the screaming Mimi can do one of those. Timmy, yes. Another one for you. <laughs> now, oh no, oh, no. oh, hot shot to the apron. And if you think the ropes are forgiving, you don't want to know what that apron is like. Oh, nice singular drop kick there by Sombra 250. Sombra 50, you know, 50, and does her to the uh, ring again. Now, Sombra, oh, she's screaming to the heavens. I think she thinks she got it in the bag. Oh boy, she's gonna go for it. Is she gonna go for it? Perhaps Angar Song? No, she was just doing with a goal and oh, she's gonna go for a finger hole. He's sweeping an attack. Perhaps right. He's got it locked in. He's sweeping, going to attack. No, she does not. She gets her up. Oh, with a nice nightmare takedown right there. Now Fifi picking up Songbird and oh, smack across the face with that um four on and oh, thank you, Rachel, there with an arm track of her own by Songbird. Who proceeds to pick Fifi up again, and here we go with that. Oh, another uh, pop arrow, mission of the ball. What are we going to do at this point? Is she going to go for it now? No, instead she goes for an Itsugiri. And those hurt. Especially with those legs like that. Like the ones that Tumbers had. Now tossing um, Fifi to her corner. Oh boy. Oh boy, she has to be up But oh, Fifi has other plans in mind. Now Fifi. Picks her up and oh another glory ball. Another glory ball. Oh, that was under the scope of those uh corner. That could have been dangerous. Gotta be very much more careful there, Fifi. Now Fifi tagging off to Samus and Samus aiming to end this match. I think. Oh, nice um forest match with a little kip up. Oh, 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 oh that will not do the favor. And a body plan right there. Now Samus trying to pick up Somber and Somber clips her down. Now she's pacing and just growling right there. Oh, ramming that arm into the canvas. And I think we might see it. We actually might see it. Are we? Oh, Angar song right there. And here we go with a pin. One, two, and oh, nice uh, break up there by Fifi. Musto was trying her hardest to uh, avoid it, but that didn't happen. And Musto is a uh, uh, Larry up for her trouble. But is she gonna do it again? Is she gonna do it again? Yes, she is. Another Angar song right there by Songbird. And this time there's no interruption. One, two. I think correct. Fifi went in there as the nigga tried to interrupt. And she catches a falcon arrow for a spinning falcon arrow for her trouble. Now, Sober, Sober feeling momentum right there. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, boy. Great, nice punch. It's a fatal one, two, and whoa, oh, 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 how close. Who was that, ladies and gentlemen? So close, in fact, that Samu is prepping herself. Are we going to see it yet again this time? She kick. Here we go. This crew attack. This crew attack. And now she's over a pin. This is going to be over. One, 
two, and this time it is, ladies and gentlemen, so Aaron, the people of you, with this band. It must feel real good for Samus to get that little more come on okay, back after what happened last episode by this one, ladies, representing the Thunderbolt, and that is where Thunderbolt is completely uh, taking away momentum, so it's a okay for Samus upcoming on the Navy but these are the great things on congratulations to the team of Bell Aaron and 50 of you and if 50 colleagues Violet and Gina that can replicate something like this on the Navy they may be called the new Navy for but only it yeah. And speaking of contenders, here we go. Rick Taylor, Jay Ulo, 10 minute Iron Man table match for contenders of the OD Championship right after this. Welcome back to Combat Wrestling folks, and yep, it's time to do us some rigging commentary. And now, the wood will fly. of putting through and he put through table both for him and for his opponent tonight and said opponent is none other than the dimension hopping warlord himself who's been hunting for gold since the very first episode of combat wrestling way back when and it is to determine the number one contender for the combat wrestling OD championship and his opponent from Shanghai China residing in San Francisco and now, his opportunity, his chance. And becoming the number one contender for Combat Wrestling's only championship of the world is so close at hand. And all he has to do, ladies and gentlemen, is put Rick Taylor through various tables within the 10 minute time frame and be the one to have the majority of tables broken. No pun intended. Now, to be honest, the question will not be, can he do it? Because he's shown time and again that he has the drive and passion to do things like that and maybe even work to his opponent. The question now will be, will he be able to? And will he be able to uh, compete against Kramer? Or will he be Rick Taylor who will get there? 10 minutes. Tons of tables. It's pain at every corner. And it all begins at the sound of the bell. 
Rick Taylor starting on all cylinders, imposing his friend for the early going with that shoulder tackle. Now he's trying to kick off. Uh, Yulo, Yulo catches him with that nasty uh, dragon school leg whip. And a kick of his own for good measure. Now Yulo picking up uh, Rick Taylor. Oh, Rick counters with that back body cross. Yulo with those kicks that are dangerous when it comes to him. And oh, that suplex right there. Demonstrated that strength of his. Now Yulo, ooh, nice drop kick there. Was that a body block? I can't tell. Now he will go for a body slap. Oh, evaded by Rick Taylor. And oh, he was trying to go for a clothesline, but that gets counter into a hot shot by Gabe Yulo. Yulo with a field goal on the lower back of Mr. Taylor there. Now Yulo picking up Rick and ooh, he's heard a blockbuster right there. Now he's going to punish the leg of Rick Taylor. Oh, landing the hit right there. Into the um, into his um thigh. And speaking of thighs, uh, yeah, um, shout out to Bob Braun from SMF. I've heard of for a while. Oh, nice Frankensteiner there by Gabe Yulo. And now he follows it up with another inverted blockbuster. Now Yulo picking up Rick Taylor. And, oh, the one from the get go out of nowhere. And now he picks up the first table of the night. And I think he believes he's ready to put him through the first one of the night to start off his countdown. And Rick got up as fast as that happened. Glowy blow, touches him to the, to the uh, table. Oh boy. I think this might have backfired. Will it? Yes, folks. It backfired spectacularly on Gabe Yulo. And Rick Taylor gets the first one of the night. Yulo about to punish Rick Taylor for his insubordinate or his daring, whatever you want to call it. Kick to the gut, uh, headbutt, and a couple of punches. Of oh boy, I know this move. Let's call it together, shall we? Double drop kick to the apron, and a busted arm. Rick Taylor wide open early on in the match. See, this is how I was saying. These guys are out here to shed blood, sweat, and tears, literally, just for the chance and becoming the number one contender for the OD Championship. And what better way to show it than here? Oh boy, what is Rick Taylor doing? He's going for a stolen butterfly suplex. Demonstrating that power. And now he sees the blood flowing in his, uh, from within his mask and I think he pissed. I think he pissed. Now Taylor picking up Yulo. Oh, uh, four up, another four up. To the corner and oh, hip smash and cross body, cross body block by Rick Taylor to Gabe Ulaw. And now, Rick Taylor with a field goal of his own to the lower back of Gabe Ulaw. And now he picks up Ulaw. Oh, we're gonna see it. The Splatterhouse. Splatterhouse for next bar right there. And now, Rick Taylor going outside. And is he gonna look for another table? No, he got a chair. He's got himself a chair. And, oh, I think he's gonna change my. Maybe not. Maybe he wants to come see me the pleasure. No. I think he might change it. What are we doing here? Oh, hit him right in the shin. And trust me, getting hit in the shin with a chair hurts like hell. Oh, he tried to hit him in the head. But now, oh, nice evasion there from Gay Yulo with that chair shot to Mr. Taylor's head right there. Now, Rick Taylor goes behind it. Oh, Tiger Suplex. And sadly for Mr. Taylor, he cannot pin. And he has to go for a one of three because this is a table match. And speaking of tables, is that what he's gonna go get right now, or is it any other type of weapon? Nah, he didn't find anything down there. So now he's gonna continue the pressure, or maybe not. Oh, Michino Kubal, also known as Falcon Arrow, by gave you along to Rick Taylor there. And the reason, I think the reason why he doesn't follow up is because he's on pain. Now, Yulo, I mean, now Rick Taylor trying to get on a vertical base. Ooh, chop from. To get you long. Woo! Right through the chest of Mr. Taylor. Uh, but that is still on pain. Both of these contestants are in absolute exclusive after all they're putting themselves through. And we're only five minutes in out of ten. Oh boy. Woo! Government Shuplex there by Rick Taylor to get you long. Now he's going outside. Is he going to get himself a table? Yes, he is, folks. He's going to try to add another one to the countdown. Now he picks up um, uh, Gabe Yulo, uh, Rick Taylor does another stolen butterfly. 
Yes, book another stun of butterfly Soup flag. And I thought he was gonna make him laugh on the table, but that didn't happen. Now Rick picking up Gayula. And oh, he goes for a double lax handle. And Gayula retaliated with vaulting um Rick Taylor on title. Oh, I see evil intentions there. What is he doing? What is he doing? Oh, gee, and if it wasn't because of the mask, that would have done so much more damage right there. That did it into the apron. But it still does some substantial damage. Don't get it twisted there. Now, Yulo heading towards uh, Rick Taylor, continuing the pressure against it. Oh, nice kick there, and a shoulder thrust from Rick Taylor to uh, Gabe Yulo to continue the punishment. And Rick is going to set up the table, I believe. Yes, he is, because he wants to add another one. We only got three minutes and 40 seconds in this contention to keep on. Oh, and now Yulo tosses uh, Mr. Taylor back inside it. Oh, nice evasion there by Rick. And a crossbody attack right there from Rick Taylor to Gabe Yulo. Oh, Gabe Yulo thought it over and decided to go back outside for a bit. But Mr. Yulo should uh, understand that he has no no table to his uh to his top yet but well, he better uh, get in there and do something i mean smashing his face face in the apron is good but oh nice invasion there by uh, rick taylor and he continue the pressure oh gave you long uh counter with that um black body drop in the thinly padded floor now rick taylor continuing the pressure oh that was evaded now he touches on mr taylor to the other side of the of the ring side and now, uh, Gabe Yulo picking up Rick Taylor. Oh, touches his face right into the turnbuckle. Face first. Now, Yulo picking up Taylor again and touches him back into the ring with only two minutes and 40 seconds to go. And oh boy, is he going to use the table as a hoist to Mr. Taylor's own petard? Which we'll find out soon enough. As uh, Gabe Yulo right there dismounting the table and fitting it into the northwestern corner. And oh boy, oh, I thought he was gonna launch it into the table again, but oh, that gets evaded by uh, Gabe Yulo. And now Yulo tossing Rick Taylor to the table, and oh, is he gonna get it done? I think he might. No, Gabe Yulo gets out of there right in the nick of time. Now Yulo's thinking of doing a suplex into the. No, it doesn't look the other side. Right, <laughs> whatever it takes to uh, give uh, extra pain just so the opponent can avoid getting through, through the table, am I right? <laughs> oh, nice elbow, diving elbow, should I say, from uh, Rick Taylor to Gabe Yulo. Now Gabe Yulo retaliated with that uh, arm right there. Into that thinly padded floor, which I cannot cease to stress how thinly padded that is and how dangerous that could be for our uh, combat wrestling stars. And they, well, I was saying all that. Rick Taylor regaining control of the match. Now he gets back inside the ring. And oh, I see he's gathered in the back, but all that taunting will cost him. Oh, there we go with another mission of football by Gabe Yulo, who proceeds to do some um, grandstanding and hot dog it of his own. But I think he may have that in the back. I think he's going to go for his one. He talks about Rick to the table. Ooh, oh, chops in the chest. And somehow, some way, instead of following up by breaking the table, he just kept the going and that will cost him. Rick with a punch to the gut hard. Now with 50 seconds of the clock, Rick tosses him to the, to the uh, table and gave you the retaliate. Doesn't Rick to the table. And now, yeah, now it's Rick. Doesn't you to the table with this back and forth going on. And oh boy, 30 seconds on the clock. And is he finally going to do it? No, another chop to the chest. Spending time instead of putting him to the table. And I think he hurt because now he's gonna slam it into the table and oh, he gets powder. I gave you again with 20 seconds on the clock. And oh boy, oh boy, 50 seconds on the clock. And oh, 2 0 by Rick Taylor. And now we got the countdown. Rick Taylor gets out of there, expertly using his time as the countdown finishes. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a contender for the only champion of the country for the mega event. And I'm sorry to say it, but Gabe Yulo has only himself to blame for this. 
having wasted all that time when we had plenty of opportunities to put Rick through a table and either tie it up or our advance. And big enough, here comes the current reigning defending only champion, Cosmo Curtis Kramer. And things are about to become rather highly combustible rather quickly. And oh, maybe not. Is Kramer extending a congratulatory hand to Rick? Oh, of course not. Why was I expecting something that trouble was from Kramer? Why was I, huh? Why wouldn't he have us? But I have a feeling that might have hated things even more so for their match at the mega event. But I will be then, this is now, Thunderbolt, Mr. Noder, Rock Stack Man, coming up after these messages. Please don't go anywhere. We'll be right back more of that rap band.
my dearest C.A.W. and Tubia. Welcome back with Vidya. Back we are and about to start this blood match is. And to for the greatest commentator in wrestling of all time, Bruno J.R. Jim Ross, boy howdy, this will be a Stubbernocker. And this whole thing came about due to the hated actions of those two individuals coming down that ring, along with their female counterparts in the whole Thunderbolt of Michael, assaulted and in turn order like they did on the previous episode. And for all intents and purposes, it might have worked. But I do believe the Marios are going to make sure that it didn't work with us. So serious, nefarious, and downright nasty consequences coming their way. The following video has been sponsored by the Nintendo Order. Let's pick it up. Here come Dale, Dale Marios. I'll hit the new plumbing, and my plumbing I ain't made some serious ass whooping, you know? <laughs> Last week, despite being a qualified match for a combat wrestling back for the championship, he was a friendly star between friends and comrades. This time, however, these guys are meant to make the Thunderbolt pay for the cowardly actions that they perform. And they're gonna make sure that they have no momentum whatsoever. This, uh, I don't know if you remember earlier tonight, it was revealed that all four stables will be participating in the tag for Scramble. And now the Mario, even though they're not gonna be the one to represent the Nintendo order, but they're gonna make sure to give some momentum to the ones that are being on Fuck the Cloud and Little Mac and take away some momentum from the Thunderbolt as punishment for their actions. Will they be able to do it or will the Thunderbolt prevail? And their plan comes full circle. Both teams of the mat ready for all out battle and it all begins at the sound of the bell right now and no sooner do i say that we have our ref on courtesy of both i was hoping we wouldn't have one of those and i'm apologizing that man if it's hard for me to call but tornado attacks are always hard to call so um yeah the scrambling is gonna be very very confusing so if you don't see hear me uh calling up much that's my excuse, uh, so I'm sorry. Now Mario picking up bullseye, and oh, punch the gun, and in the meantime, Agent Venom just rammed into uh, Luigi into the corner. Now Agent Venom dragging Luigi into the, oh, forehead first into the apron. Meanwhile, Mario hitting uh, bullseye in the, uh, in the forehead, and now bullseye picking back up, and a couple of punches to Mario. Uh, oh no, oh no, oh! Suplex on the thinly padded floor to Mario Kirti of both sides. On the other end of the spectrum, we got Luigi beating down of uh, Agent Venom. Oh, that's low line right there. Also on that thinly padded floor. And now Luigi tossing um, Agent Venom to the canvas. I'm sorry. And Agent Venom taunting it. That was not a good idea. Oh, throat toad suplex like there. From Luigi to Agent Venom. Meanwhile, Bullseye tossing Mario to the ring and oh, elbow to the forehead. Now Bullseye goes back in and oh, punishing uh, Mario. Look at him choking. Look at him choking. Oh, oh, are we gonna see it? Are we gonna see it? Oh, I thought we were gonna see Venom bite from uh, Agent Venom to Agent. Oh boy, here we go. Oh, <laughs> perfect pitch. Bullseye signature maneuver right there. And here we go for the first minute. Oh, but he didn't notice that Luigi was right behind him. Now Luigi punishing uh, Bullseye with that, oh, rib breaker right there. Now Luigi picking up uh, Bullseye, oh, knee to the, uh, knee before he throws his positive redundancy. Now, oh, he was going to single leg crap, but oh, Agent Venom was right behind it. Mario makes a play with a, oh, a spine buster choke slam. Now, all teams are in the canvas, and now Bullseye picking up Luigi, oh, nice clothesline. And in the meantime, Agent Venom hit uh, 
Mario with a back body drop. Luigi picking up bullseye and tosses him to the outside. Meanwhile, Venom, he's going for, oh, ho, ho, Venom Web. Five star Venom Web right there. He goes, oh, didn't even give him time. He just jumped on him. Break that whatever count was going to happen. Running body strike by Age of Venom through all. Mario, oh, he's calling for it. Are we going to see it this time? Or how are we going to see it this time? Picks him up and Venom Bite. Venom Bite connects hard to Mario. Now Mario gets right to the center of the wing. Are we going to see a pin for here? One, two, and yes, folks. As soon as we began, as soon as it ended, the Thunderbolt wins this one. Sign still delivered the Thunderbolt game momentum for their match at the Mega Event when they face the other three stables in a tag coach scramble four way tag team match. And sorry to the Mario that wanted to get some money from a vengeance on their team, but that didn't happen. But uh, perhaps Fuck the Mac might do it, but perhaps maybe one of the other teams in the scramble might do it by becoming the combat wrestling tag for champs, or maybe the Thunderbolt might get the crown. I'm guessing we'll all find out when we get to the Mega Event. Really gonna hear your winner, Venom and Bullseye, the Thunderbolt. They're up tonight. Let's see how they fare at the Mega Event. Oh, I hear that we have an interview with Mike Dawson over in the uh, backstage. Let's go over there and listen, please. The main event for the main event promises us to be FIRE! And speaking of main events, here comes the final match of the tournament of the day. Four went in, and only one will become the number of contenders. Who will be? We'll find out. If you haven't subscribed to the Video Game Wrestling Network yet, here's what you've been missing.
Game Wrestling Network, the only network for you. The most awesome experience network in CAW today. CAW Cosmos, welcome to the main event. Ladies and gentlemen, the following is the final round of Combat Wrestling's Tournament of Dames to determine the number one contender. And it is a fatal four-way match. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you heard right. In an effort to expedite the outcome, the outfit has seen fit to roll over in the semifinals and finals of the Tournament of Dame into the, what's going to happen tonight. A fatal four way for the chance at qualifying as the number one contender to the Colton Wrestling Dame Championship. Right now, her being held by Madia Smith. Since the very beginning of this tournament, she was one of the handsome favorites by you, the Cossier of the Cosmos, to be one of the finalists. And let's be honest, she did disappoint. Now, this is the time, this is the chance, the one chance she gets to become the number one contender. Will she be the one to face Basil Maria Simmons at the mega event for Summit Wrestling State Championship? Or will it be one of the three? Opponent that she has tonight in the spread of four way qualifier man. Only time and her participation right now will grant us an answer to that question. And one of the aforementioned three competitors she has to face tonight is that woman coming down the aisle, the bride of the Joker. No doubt thirsty for yet one more chance at Combat Wrestling State Championship Bowl. And the opponent, residing in Gotham City, Harley Quinn. Twice she was so close to the goal she had made. Twice the opportunity has slipped through her fingers. And tonight she's going to make sure that there will be no other chances. But it's not her against one on one. Oh no. There are three combatants who want the same thing that she wants and are going to make sure that she doesn't get it. But will they be successful or will she be the one facing Maria Simmons yet again at a chance at the goal? Another one who tasted it twice and was the third one to be the charm. This is the Empress of Budokai coming right down the aisle. And the opponent, residing in Hercule City, Son Fun. And of all participants in this contention, she was the one that was the closest 
to tasting the cup of wrestling since championship. And I'm willing to bet that her third will not be stated, will not be quenched until that happens. And she has it on her way once and for all. Ladies and gentlemen, here I present to you, who will be without the shadow of the doubt, the greatest roadblock in the ambition of the other three. A woman, a creature who has made a promise and is doing everything in her power to fulfill it. And if fortune continues to favor her, she might as well, but that's a big hit. However, while she has dropped any opposition that has come her way since the fatal forward, they are going to be very different. So let's find out if that's the case tonight. The final match, the final round. Who will face Madea Simmons at the mega event out of this for a lovely yet little dame? Let's find out right now. Fatal forward had another rather tough um match type to call, so please bear with me on this one. We got the Mona making short work of Harley Quinn with a oh, field goal and ooh, nice evasion there by Abilene to uh, Marvel, I thought it was going to do a belly to belly, and now Abilene picking up uh, Pana, oh, flip from both Ab, uh, Pan and Harley. Now Harley getting away from uh, the Mona, oh, nice uh, close line right there by Harley Quinn to the Mona who proceeds to, oh, ram her arm right into the canvas and doing that move that we call Oh, this is illegal. <laughs> now on the other end, we got Pawn punishing Avelina. And, oh, Avelina making her pay with that uh, little fireman um, takedown. Demona picking up Harley Quaid, wrenching the arm, and oh, throw the block. While Pan tosses Avelina to the outside. And now we switch the partner, don't you know? Pan picking the fight through all uh, Demona. You gotta admire <laughs> the, the, the guts of, of Pawn to take on this monster. Even if she's a Saiyan, you have to admire those guns. Oh, here we go. Ooh, they break her by uh, Harley Quinn to uh, Aveline. And now she goes behind the Mona and continues to break on the Mona. Oh, boy. Acha, perhaps? Oh, Snake Eyes instead. Not as faithful, but it still does the work. Ooh, Harley Quinn, like, uh, taking Aveline. And, oh, Aveline makes a fight with that nice drop kick right there. And now everybody's speeding up on everybody. It's become quite a freaking barn burner here. Oh, that break of there by Abilene to uh, Harley Quinn. And while the Mona slipped away. Oh, it was not the Kamehameha. If that was, that might be it. One, two, no, ladies and gentlemen. The first spin of the night and a two to the two. Now both Pan and, uh, and uh, Harley Quinn is punishing on Abilene. And that ended up as quickly as it began, didn't it? Now Harley wrenching the head of oh, Pawn right there. Now the Mona goes back in the ring and attempts that attack at Harley, but that failed miserably. And now Harley, Harley makes the Mona put a smile on her hand. And now she's gonna go for that pin. One, two, and I guess this is elimination um, style because Pawn didn't do anything to like get all the uh, Harley out of the Mona's uh, flat, I think. Oh, are we gonna see it? Are we gonna see it? Libera Shaw! Libera Shaw connected right there! No part of the one! Two! And two, ladies and gentlemen, two to the two! And that confirms that this is an elimination four way match then. And here we go! Avali! Oh! Nasty backfist to the face of the Mona! <laughs> and now Avali, last person in the ring, standing up on her two feet, and she's going up! And I think she was gonna go for Avali in flight, but. That didn't happen. She was gonna go for the drop in, but Pan got out of the way, and now Pawn, Pawn, measuring on Harley. Is she gonna do it? Is she gonna hit her? Here we go. Spirit Bomb. Spirit Bomb, but it's hard to go one, two, and ah, oh, two to the two, ladies and gentlemen. That was too close call in the middle of this main event to call to, uh, to see who would qualify for the day championship, and now, it is Paul who gets a smile put on her face, courtesy of Harley Quinn, who proceeds to call it. Is she gonna happen? No, the Mona cuts her back short. 
tossing her around like a rag doll. Now the Mona gets, oh, that's the first top like right there by Avalyn to the Mona. Now she goes, oh, Assassin's Clash to Harley Quinn. He's Harley Quinn on a tap. He's Harley Quinn on a tap. She, oh, she gets away in the nick of time, Harley Quinn does. Whoa, this, this match is heating up and that's the way to the ladies and gentlemen. Globy blow by Demona, followed by a, a spinning shuffle kick by Abilene. Oh boy. Oh, backbreaker into the back of uh, Pana now. Abilene capitalizing with one, two, no, 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 no. Now Demona going up top. And I think she's having some serious intentions. Oh, I mean the knee right there. Stop with your curse, but no one at the pool. <laughs> I believe pro, uh, prevents that from going on. Now she's gonna play again. And oh, Pod cuts her up at the at the pad. And oh, slot, Spaceball slide into a uh, Hurricane Rana right there on the Dilly Pad blow by Harley Quinn, who's signaling for it. What's she gonna do? It? Oh, Harley Quinn ain't got prevented right there by I believe on the nick of time. In the meanwhile, oh, Frankenstein of my pond to the Mona in the ring. And oh, and she gets split for her effort. And now the Mona dragging her, get her on the ring. Uh, oh, I thought you were gonna go for another attempt, but no. This time Pawn uh, inverts with a back body drop. Now the Mona getting up and oh, nice arm drag right there by Pawn to the Mona. The Mona trying to kick and oh, that effort got failed miserably. In the outside, Hardy Quinn just uh, wraps the uh, elbow to Abeling and brings her back in. And now she's just taunting to the crowd at Grandstanding and hot dogging, and that's when I, that's when I, uh, spider in the butt later on, huh? Oh, double woman, uh, tag team in the DDT between Avalyn and, uh, Harley Quinn to part, and now Avalyn proceeds to hit Liver of Sean! Right there for Harley Quinn, there we go, one, two, and Harley Quinn is the first to get out of this contention! And her dream of having one third chance <laughs> goes up in smoke. Just like that. Now I believe. Oh, back body drop to the Mona. I believe picking up the Mona. And now she's gonna touch. Oh, I thought she was gonna touch to the corner. No, she just went in the arm from behind it. Oh, she catches that elbow for her trouble. Like, oh, she. Oh, oh. Oh, she did not land well on that one. I hope she didn't. That's not, nothing bad happened to Abilene in that one. Oh, she's getting up. Okay. Okay, she's uh, she's letting uh, referee set up. Uh, uh, no, that she could continue to uh, go on with the match. And she does pick it up uh, upon with that nasty vertical suplex right there. Or should I say side suplex? I'm sorry. Now she's wrenching the head of Pond right there. And wrenching it some more. And now we're going for a second pin of the night. One, two. No, then you're two to the two. Meanwhile, the man is back on a vertical base. And now she kicked from both ladies. And she goes for a oh, backbreaker. One more. On the road for I believe that from Trey. And here we go. Destiny Unlimited. Destiny Unlimited. And this is the second pin. One, two, and no. It was the second pin, but not a successful one. Now the Mona continuing the pressure on Pond. Here we go. Lifting her up like the child that she is. <laughs> oh, and dropping her on her head. And being a dame, that hurts even more so. Oh, she's in position. Is she going to do it? How are we going to see it? Oh, how you curse again and again? No water in the pool. Now, Pawn punishing her with that clubby blow. Now, Pawn going up to the top and she's gonna press it. Oh, double axe handle to the Mona right there. I believe was trying to capitalize, but that didn't happen. Now, oh, another back with no, that didn't. Oh, nice on um, short jab right there. It? And oh, it, it's chaos, it's pandemonium. It's a complete and total smorgasbord of pain for this three dames just for a chance at the at just being the number one contender for the day championship. This is how much that title means to this three. This is how much that title means to the industry in general. And while I was saying all that on uh, the morning right there, stand back on the tip by Aveline at a slam. Now Bond driving the moon and oh, face first into the turnbuckle. Now she does it again, again for 
damaging the facial features of the Mona. Because let's face it, as I said before, steel, even if it uh, has some um, plastic padding, it does not work well with flesh. And now she's doing the exact same thing to Abilene the Grand Prix. And now, ooh, the Mona makes her pay with the running body block attack. Now picking up a uh, pawn. Oh boy. Oh, this is. Oh, ho, oh, oh. Good thing by a pawn to avoid that by hitting some elbows to the face of the Mona. And now she's dragging the Mona into the ring. And is we gonna go? Yes, we are. Elbow to the forehead. And now, Pond goes into the ring, and now all three of the ladies are in the ring, and we go, oh, we, we were going to go for a, a, a nearly clutch, but Avalie prevented that with the Ensugiri. Now, Avalie is turning the head of Pond. And here we go. How's this clutch again? This time to Pond. He's on the top. He's on the top. Pond top. Pond top. Can he settle his contention? And that's another one who likes smoke, dreams, and ambitious. Go right through her fingers. This time, courtesy of Amelie de Bocafre, who's proceeding to touch the Mona outside. And oh boy, we're going close to close. We're going close to close. D, D, T on a thinly padded floor. And I cannot help but agree with the combat wrestling audience tonight present. This was, in fact, indeed awesome. Now the Mona picking herself up. Here we go. Oh, she was going to go for another backbreaker, but that telegram got red and got evaded. Punches by Abilene all over the place. And now, oh, kick to the face. And, oh, here we go with those lethal kicks that make Abilene so dangerous. Oh, last one on the face. Now picking up the Mona. And now she's going for, oh, arm wrecker right there. And a kick and a elbow. And she's continuing that that last. And this time the Mona goes for a balance of her own. Ooh, nice evasion there by uh, Abilene. She was going to go for a kick, but that gave him right into an elbow. Oh, ooh, sidewalk slam on that same kind of floor. Never get tired of stressing how thin it is, right? So now the Mona picking up Abilene. And, oh, boy. She signed back into an Uranagi, Abilene dog. Now she picks up the Mona. Now a couple of more kicks. And oh, that one really hit hard on the jaw of the Mona, didn't it? Now Abilene picking her up and oh boy, more kick and oh, a field goal with a hard attack right there. Providing more pain. And the more pain your opponent is in, the less likely it will be for her to uh, get away from that pain attempt or uh, from that tap out with that assassin's foot. Oh, short jab right there by the Mona. A front chop and another running body attack right there by the gargoyle now she picks her up at oh boy oh boy oh belly the back slam and like i said earlier being that she's a dame is gonna hurt a lot more and those who know anatomy will know exactly what i mean and look at her tossing i believe close to close like a rat doll the strength of the gargoyle right there oh punches her down and now she picks her up again the one that oh another chop to the chest Woo! Oh, another fireman uh, takedown by Avalie. But she seems to be woozy. She seems to be in pain. She just missed that at all. The Mona capitalizing with the headbutt. And now she's roaring through the heavens. She wants to get this one right out of the bag. And finish it up as quick as she can. Ooh, uh, spinning back fist by the uh, Avalie. But that didn't do much. And oh boy. Oh, backbreaker and a wrench. Take the little feet from the FFO. The Mona now diving the knee into the back of Abilene. Now picks her up. And oh, Abilene gets her off her off herself with a knee of a rope to uh, the Mona's chest. Now, Abilene picking up the Mona and wrenching the head with the... How is this legal move? <laughs> yep, that's the official name of that move here in other wrestling folks. <laughs> now, Abilene pulling out the truth to get her some spiritual strength because she wants to be the one but the Mona the Mona also wants to be the one and she will put all the stop and now oh they all we lace a little too close to us you know and here we go with an acrobatic um, um, um acrobatic punishment to the arm by uh, Abilene and now oh the Mona makes her paper um slamming the, the back of her head on that uh, barricade right there close to a lovely uh Ring bell, bell ringer, and um, uh, ring announcer Maggie Simpson. Now the Mona 
picking up Avali. Oh, she was going to go for a, a club line, but that didn't work. Oh, throat cut and a clubby blow. And she was going to go for another club. And here we go with another Baraka punches. Punches. And all oh, the punishment continues from the Mona to Avali. And now the Mona ramming of Avali straight into the turbo. And again, continue with that pressure. Continue that punishment. Continue that sadistic streak of her. And Avalyn, I think she had enough. Ooh, nice rock there. Now, she continues the pressure. Oh, running body attack by the Mona yet again. Now, the Mona picking up Avalyn and another one. Another backbreaker with a back friend. And those hurt. Those look like they hurt because they do hurt, ladies and gentlemen. Now, the Mona picking up. Avalyn, Avalyn, uh, up closer with that uh, wrench and a kick. And now, a little clench of their own. These two ladies are tired. These two ladies don't know what else could be done to each other. And here we go with that. Oh, nasty suplex on that thinly padded floor. And following it up with that knee to the chest, to the upper chest for the measure. As I was saying earlier, these two ladies are tired. They've been going at each other for quite a while. And still, they still have that fire going in it. Oh, boy. Here we go. Dragon sleeper. Dragon sleeper. Is the Mona gonna tap to it? Is the Mona gonna tap to this dragon sleeper by Emily the Grand Prix? No, she does not, ladies and gentlemen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Mona, even if she's just running on fume, she's picking up Emily the Grand Prix and hits her with that military press right there. Now, dragging her, send her on the ring, kicks her up, and oh boy, here we go with a. Destiny Unlimited. Will this be enough to put over a little group away? One, two, and it is. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a number one contender for the day championship. And her name is the Mona. By heaven almighty, this was a match. This was a fight. This was everything we thought this would be. And ten times more. These four ladies gave it their all. Blood, sweat, tears, and everything else to become the number one contender. But in the end, the Frog Wolf from Anne Scotland was the one who captured that prestigious opportunity to fight Maria Simmons at the mega event. That tonight show gets concluded. On behalf of everybody at Combat Wrestling, this has been Matt Mehuan. So long, everybody. See you at the main event. Too late. The sub story tackles this very serious subject. If you or someone you know feels like this, please talk. There's always someone willing to listen.